You're listening to Racing Future Radio. Here's your host, Mr. Dennis Mills, with this week's guest, Mr. John Snowman. Uh, we're privileged to have John Snowblin with us. John is parliamentarian, journalist, entrepreneur. Truck driver. And there you go. And <laughs> Good morning, Dennis. <laughs> but most important, uh, a horseman. And the man that was um, handpicked by Premier Wynne to be the lead horseman on the panel that was uh, formed some two years ago plus and uh, you know I want to put emphasis on horsemen because in my days working with Frank Stronach I used to from time to time present him with people that I thought should run a racetrack and he would say to me well have they ever owned a horse and I would say well I don't think so and he'd said never ever bring to me someone to run a racetrack that's never owned a horse because the fact that someone has had a relationship with a horse uh, really does uh, make a difference and people in the horse industry immediately uh, give you a pass that you understand uh, what it's all about and so to welcome this morning and to start off with i want you to take me back to a story that uh, you told me a few weeks ago to your Stouffville auction yard days when you used to start with horses. How you got involved with horses? <laughs> well, everybody's got a way in, Dennis. Mine was, uh, mine was the uh, the glamorous way into the horse business. I uh, started when I was a little kid riding sale horses at a couple of local sales, uh, you know, in the greater Toronto area. We used to have some great sales, as you know, grade horses and sometimes registered horses. And uh, they'd pay kids that were dumb enough to get on these things uh, five bucks to ride them to the sale ring in the attempt to make them look like they were kid broke and uh, you know five dollars was a lot of money so uh, I climbed on as many as they'd let me climb on and that started a kind of curiosity about horses and about really the psychology of sales you know is kind of very interesting and you know you, you pick up a lot of that you pick up a lot of things sitting in the back of a sale barn but you stuck with it. You went yeah. on. How did it, uh, where did it go from there? Well, I got really interested in, uh, in training horses. So how do you, uh, you know, it, 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 there's an ancient art here, right? So generation after generation after generation of, of horse people have passed on things. And uh, I was lucky enough to find a couple of mentors uh, in those early days who would take a dumb kid that didn't show any particular talent and, and help help uh, understand how horses see things, how they perceive the world, what what matters to them, and how you train them to do things. So I, I got uh, hooked on reining horses, which is kind of Western dressage. It was a really, it was a sport that was all set to grow at that time when I was a young man. And, and um, I kind of, I still wonder how you make a reining horse do all those things, but I'm trying to learn and, uh, you know, maybe someday I'll get it figured out. But you, uh, you stuck with it and you, I understand now that you're, uh that you give lectures and you yeah. know in austin texas and you know you've, you've you've grown it and expanded it to beyond just riding horses a friend of mine told me dennis that uh, the lord takes care of drunks and fools and i've qualified in both categories so <laughs> I, you know yeah it's been a really interesting you know when you think about it from those sale barns as a young teenager uh to today you know it's been an amazing amazing journey taking me all around the world I do sit on the advisory board at Colorado State University and Texas A&M for their equine science programs. Uh, I've worked on judging all around the world, and I've had a chance to judge all around the world with uh, various events, uh, mostly reining horses. And uh, I've met a, you know thousands of people, and you know the story in the horse business. It's all about two things, great horses and great people, and I've, I've met some fabulous, fabulous people. And, uh, you know, this, this experience of teaching in uh, Texas, do you see that that's a space where we here in Canada really have room to grow? Absolutely. You know, there's an opportunity, I think, uh, you know, in our work at Texas A&M, we're working now on a program, an EMBA, an equine MBA. So really helping wow. people get ready to, to run the, take management and leadership roles inside of the horse industry. And you'll know from your travels around the world, that there are, in all aspects of the equine industry, there's huge investment in infrastructure, in growing the business, in marketing, and doing some of the things that you've been doing with Racing Future. We need a cadre of young people who can become our next leaders, who, who really have a love for horses, but have an understanding of the business. 
and uh, that's going to help us grow all aspects of equine sport. I find that that is one of the great challenges for people who have invested in the industry. Uh, the challenge of finding younger people who not only understand horses, but who really understand the business side of uh, whether it's operating a farm or or uh, sort of uh, putting a business plan together to run a racetrack, whether it's on the marketing side or the uh, just the basics of running a physical plant. It seems to me that we've really uh, not done as well as we should have in this uh, sector when it's when it employs so many people and it provides so much money to the treasuries. Well, yeah, it's, it's a huge business and it's a growing business. I mean, you know, we, we all see it. That, that's the one nice thing about the perspective I've been able to have is you can kind of see the overall equine industry business, not just the racehorse business or the reining horse business or the show jumping business, but really how it all fits together. And it's a huge and growing business. And, and we need people who've got expertise in facility management for sure, uh, but also in promoting and marketing sports and entertainment, uh, which, you know, clearly we've got a great product. We, we need to be a little more expert at how to reach a different audience. Our whole marketing strategy, our communication strategy, these are things that are the next young group of leaders coming into our industry need to have a lot of skill sets that maybe we didn't have to have 30 years ago. So it's been great at A&M to, to, to bring that, uh, to kind of put a program together to help embrace that future need. And we certainly could do that right here in Ontario and I think help fill a worldwide marketplace because it, this truly is something that's, uh, that's happening around the world and the need for those young leaders is, is there everywhere around the world. Uh, John, thank you so much for your uh, support, your dedication, and uh, good luck. Keep it going. Hope to have you back soon. All right. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. You've been listening to Racing Future Radio with your host, Mr. Dennis Mills. This week's guest was Mr. John Snowblin.